about interpreting scatter plots. Uh, what do we do, or residual plots specifically? What do we do when we see a residual plot? Uh, if you haven't seen the first video, then this is a continuation of that video. Um, we want to look at a few things. Your book says there are a few things that I evaluate or I look for when I'm looking at a residual plot. Number one, uh, I want to see that the dots are fairly scattered about my line. There's no particular pattern to them. And you, if you look at this the scatter plot, you, you see this particular set of data here, which looks somewhat scattered. You don't see any necessarily a uh, pattern to it. You see a few outliers maybe here. Um, that one's on the edge of it, but then you've got one out here that's definitely an outlier. So we have two two main deviations from our group, uh, which is another thing we look for. Okay, you have two types of outliers when you look at scatter plots. You have outliers that are just down the x-axis away from the group, which is what we have here, and you have an outlier that has a large residual value. Well, if you press trace on a residual plot and you just scroll over, um, if you look at the y value, that y value is exactly the residual value. And I'm just scrolling along and I'm trying to find the actual residual value of the one at the very top. Okay, this is obviously what we would consider a influential outlier. Um, this is a, a, a uh, observation that has a very large residual. In other words, it's going to pull my regression equation in a different direction. Um, if I were to go back in and delete this, then my regression equation would have a much different slope. Okay. If we look at the other outlier, which you have here, uh, this is one we would call an outlier, but it's not so much influential because if I delete that point, it's not going to change the regression slope very much because it flaw it kind of follows along with that line here. Okay, so you have two different things, two different types of outliers. We have one here which is what we consider to be a influential point observation and this is a typically just a traditional outlier in the x direction. Another thing we look for, um, we want to see that my my dots are fairly scattered about in the same manner. In other words, it's not really close to the line here, and way out here, you've got dots all over the place. So you basically kind of see it kind of spreading out. If you want to see a great example of this, um, you can look on page 157 in the graph at the very top. It gives you a, a good visual of what happens when my standard deviation changes throughout my line, meaning that it's really accurate at the beginning of the line, and it loses its accuracy down towards as x gets larger. Okay, so the four things we looked at were: is it a curved pattern? Is it scattered about? Okay, I want to see a pretty a plain, boring set of dots scattered. That means it's linear. If there's a pattern to it, it's not linear, and my regression isn't valid. Number two, we looked at the outliers, um, two different kinds. We had the ones with large outliers, like this one, uh, which are influential observations, which do affect the slope of my line. And we looked at ones where they have a large, um, I guess you would call these outliers in the x, x direction. Okay, so that was the two and third, the second, and third thing. The fourth things was, does my standard deviation look to be uniform throughout my plot? Okay, other than my outliers, I see my standard deviation here. It's pretty scattered about. You know, I wouldn't say there's any particular pattern to this. Um, it's fairly scattered. It's fairly what I would like to see in my my scatter pl or my residual plot. If you want to go through the details in one page 156, um, the bulleted points on that question or on that page kind of go through the things you look at when you look at a residual plot. <laughs>